Hi, my name is Dina Apostolo. Thank you so much for joining us for this session focused on how your organization can lean on data and technology to remain customer focused and to drive revenue while adapting to change and preparing for the future. So one thing is certain, over the past few months, we realized that no business is immune to crisis and no organization is 100% resilient. However, it's become really clear that businesses who have built a strong digital foundation are in a much better position to weather through this change. So for our session today, I'm joined by Matthew Jafarian, EVP of Business Strategy for the Miami Heat and American Airlines Arena. Matthew has a deep understanding and background in technology, data, and analytics, and his leadership is really helping the heat to rise to the top of sports technology in the world. Matthew, thank you so much for joining us today. Sure. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and jump right in. We know that the Miami Heat is one of the most celebrated NBA teams and has also pioneered using technology to drive fan engagement experiences. Tell us more about the work that your team is doing to enable that type of experience. Yeah, uh, it's interesting. Uh, the median value of an NBA team has tripled in the last decade, and that's largely because of these massive TV deals. And you know, we have a global audience that can see the game wherever they are. So in a really short period of time, Teams have gone from being essentially mom and pop shops to multi-billion dollar organizations. Our business strategy team is a part of that trend. We came about when the Heat combined multiple disciplines from around the company into one startup-like team. We play a lot of different roles. We're kind of like internal management consultants. We dive into other departments. We consider them our customers and we understand their needs and we work to improve their process, the people, the technology. So there's a lot of digital transformation there since a lot of the, our, our folks like myself come from tech, but sometimes it's just about introducing innovation, uh, doing small things like uh, capturing action items in meetings and explaining the concept of agile. So it's really fun. And now we've got a team of 30 people who do everything from project management to market research, data and analytics is a big part of what we do. Uh, we also source technology and we create technology. Uh, so not only are those departments our customers, but the fans are our customers as well. So we provide all of the underlying technology that powers most of the fan experience within the arena. That could be, um, you know, your ticketing pedestals, your point of sale system when you purchase a jersey or a pizza. You may use our loyalty program or you may interface with our mobile app or online with us at MiamiHeatStore.com, which is where you can get this awesome shirt. As a sports fan, I want my team to win games, but I also realize that there's a lot more in it than just winning the games um, to make an NBA team successful. So tell us more about the business of running a professional sports team. You nailed it. Sports is really interesting because we have more than one bottom line. Uh, first and foremost, we want to win championships. You know, the Heat are who we are because of Pat Riley. And if you don't follow basketball, the guy's a living legend. He's, he's won championships as a player, as a coach, as an executive. He's already in the Hall of Fame. And he just sets the championship culture for our entire organization. So the main way that the Heat measures success is through championships, because we believe that drives everything else. Fan satisfaction, business performance, all of that follows the performance of the team. Uh, I report to the president of business operations, who's responsible for sales, marketing, legal, finance, all the elements of a traditional business. And there's overlap between the two. There's, there's business operations, basketball operations, for example, the legal and finance team are shared across the two. And the marketing team designs the jerseys for the, bit, for the basketball side. Uh, my team develops technology and analytics for both. So, so we help each other however we can. That's great. You know, your fans and customers are engaging through a myriad of channels today, and most organizations are lacking the understanding of who those customers, and, and I would expect that you're also challenged with that same thing in terms of who the fan is, um, where the relationship sits within an organization, and if you have the right data, and if it's in one place, um, to be able to bring that data together to make um, smart business decisions. So what does the heat do to understand fans, especially when you have an evolving fan base, the demographics change, you have an emerging set of preferences and expectations as we think about the emergence of technology. So how do you um, think about that to understand your fans best and to get to know them? Yeah, so that was one of the fundamental problems that we faced and still a lot of sports teams face 
is that we didn't know who the fan was. Uh, so in a previous life, before I was with the Heat, I used to build apps for malls and shopping centers, and that was a lot of fun. But in that world, you have no idea who the shopper is. They're anonymous. Then I joined the Heat in American Airlines Arena, and I'm thinking, we have a ticketed building. We should know who's walking in the door, right? We didn't. Uh, and that's because tickets used to be paper and PDF tickets, and those are largely anonymous. So the ticket used to be tied to a barcode. That, that was the UID. That was a unique identifier. But I can take that barcode and give it to my friend, my family, a customer. I could sell it on the secondary market. And, and that person comes to the game and they're sitting in our building, but we don't know who they are, even though they're a fan. So a few seasons ago, we upgraded to digital ticketing. And now the ticket is, is tied to the identity of a fan, not an arbitrary barcode. So when they transfer the ticket, the recipient accepts with a verified name and email. And so we now know who's walking in the door. So now 90% of Heat fans entering the arena on game day have a digital ticket tied to their identity. We were one of the first in sports to do that. And last season, we took it a step further. We became the first team in either the NBA or NHL uh, to allow contactless ticketing, fully NFC-based ticketing. So it's really cool. It's a, it's a cool experience. You have the ticket in your wallet on your device, it recognizes that you have a ticket. It recognizes that you're within the area of the arena. It automatically pulls it up on the lock, lock screen. You unlock, you tap, and you walk in, right? And then behind the scenes, we use customer insights to make that the foundation of a fan profile. So customer insights is a CDP from Microsoft. And now we use that to build out everything we know about the fan. When they buy a ticket, scan into the building, use loyalty, etc. It all ties back to that fan identity. So now we know who our fans are. We have this great platform in the Miami Heat app, which is how they got into the building. We've incentivized them to come into the building with this app. And now we communicate with them using that to make a better fan experience for them and, and that we can communicate with them in a really personal way. Uh, for example, we've got a loyalty program that rewards you whenever you purchase merchandise, drinks, food, etc. And the fan gets their incentive, which could be discounts and points, but it also provides us with insight into things like what your jersey size is, what concession stand you frequent, whether you like to eat before the game or at halftime. So we take that information and we provide that to our service teams using Dynamics 365. So if I'm a service member, I can now call up somebody and provide them really great customer service or meet them in the arena. Mr. Perez, thank you for renewing your season ticket membership with us. We wanted to thank you with your favorite bottle of wine. You know, it's that, it's that surprise and delight moment. And our, our service members, our, our service reps, they have like 200 to 300 accounts per rep. So they will never be able to do that on their own. It's all about capturing that information for them and serving it up to them in a way that they can easily consume either through Dynamics 365 or Power. For our sales teams, we do very similar things. We know less about these folks because they're not our existing customers, but they've been in the arena. They've engaged with us. And so if I call up a lead as a salesperson, it's not enough to just have a name and contact information anymore. What we now append to that is their history, when they've been in the arena. For example, if I see that a prospect only comes to weekend games, I might upsell them on a partial plan that revolves strictly around that. Or let's say I see a prospect that only comes to Celtics games. Well, I can identify that they're not really a Heat fan, they're a Celtics fan that lives in South Florida and they're gonna to come to the arena every time they're in town. So I'm gonna follow up on that lead in that matter. So all of that lives within a power app that's in, baked into Dynamics 365. It pulls data from Azure and then it's deduped via customer insights. So if I have Matt Jafarian in the loyalty program over here and Matthew Jafarian in Ticketmaster over here, the pros our, our salespeople know it's the same person. That's fantastic. Now more than ever, organizations need to provide end-to-end -end digital experiences um, across every stage. So you just spoke about data being collected in so many different uh, think point interactions with your fans. Um, but data is really the underlying factor that can help here. And it's all about how it comes together for a single view of, of fans. And it's incredibly relevant um, for delivering a, a, a consistent and an exceptional customer experience. So organizations have been talking about personalization for a lot of years now. Um, and most would say that they're doing something 
simple or in a small pocket. And sometimes it traditionally le leads with maybe email. Uh, but from what folks are telling me, it's not really happening at the scale across their organizations. Are you able to personalize experiences at scale? And how do you see that contextually relevant in terms of customer and fan engagement? So in sports, we're pretty fortunate in that we have a cyclical business and a clear customer journey that we can map a communica our communication against. So the moment the fan purchases a ticket, their pregame experience, their game day experience, when they're in the arena, after the event, all of that can be identified and we can send contextually relevant messaging against each moment. Our push strategy on mobile is a great example. Remember, we've got all these folks coming in via digital ticketing, so they already have, we already have a presence on their devices. So we first draw them in with stuff they care about, like game highlights and official news. And once we get their attention, then we hit them with the, with the initiatives to drive our business. Uh, for example, a couple of years ago when we went on sale with playoff tickets, we pushed out one push notification that sold tens of thousands of dollars in tickets in less than an hour, right? It shows you that personal communication and that it's relevant to that person. Uh, but my favorite example is, is a much more targeted example. Uh, we have season ticket holders. We call them season ticket members. These are folks that, we, that renew with us every single year. So last year in February, our season ticket member renewal campaign had just launched and we wanted to try something new. So we identified season ticket members who had tickets to that night's game, who had already scanned into the building, and who had not yet renewed. So think about how targeted of an audience of that, that is. We sent a push to these folks, encouraging them to visit our, our membership section at 115, and we got a 94% influenced app open rate, which is an urban airship term. So over 90% of this target audience said, hey, this is relevant to me, I'm gonna check this out. But that was really powerful for us. But we use different channels as well. You know, pre-game, we might send an email. In Arena, might be a push notification. It depends on the message and, and frankly, the call to action. Uh, fortunately, we've got 41 home games to tweak and tweak and tweak until we find the right combination. And once we figure out what resonates, then we lock that in. That's incredible. Uh, I love how targeted you can get and how much you can test and learn on the fly there. So that's it. that's really Fantastic. And it's important to understand too that the customer journey is far from being linear. So having the ability to understand where customers are to be able to run targeted efforts in real time is critical uh, to make sure that you're planning for the right next activity and the right next step in an effective way. How do you measure success uh, for your business? Can you talk through that and some of the things that you've instrumented at this point in time? Sure. So it's important to understand how sports teams make money. So tier one revenue for us is TV revenue, right? Uh, with them, we have ticket sales and corporate partnerships, things like American Airlines are, is our naming rights partner and Ticketmaster is our official ticketing partner. Tier two is retail sales, food and beverage sales, and our enterprise and events business. So our KPIs revolve around those revenue streams. We're constantly asking ourselves, you know, how many monthly active users does the Heat app have? How many new to file names have been added to CRM? What's the fan satisfaction rate from our last event? And we're really busy building. It's not just Heat games, it's also concerts. So that's a lot to cover and it's not always straightforward to figure out. This is a, was a big issue for us. And about five years ago, our president of business operations is pretty tired of asking a simple question like, how many season tickets have we sold? And getting three different answers depending on who we asked. And so he set out to find a fix for this, but there wasn't anything on the market. Uh, so he built a team. He enlisted uh, our now VP of strategy and data analytics, who started by building out a data warehouse so that we could gather data from all of these sources and serve it up to the business. Uh, he had had experience, uh, our VP had experience in Tableau and AWS, but the challenge with making multiple systems talk to each other and, and, commu and normalize that data what was massive. So he realized that he needed a fully integrated ecosystem and he had the opportunity to build something from the ground up. So he went with Azure and this was in 2016. So back then that was almost a controversial decision, but now he looks like a genius because we have data in Adobe Analytics that seamlessly talks to Dynamics, which talks to Power BI. Both of those talk to Power Apps, all of them pull from the same data warehouse. You know, and most of the non-technical folks in our organization don't realize just how amazing it is 
But that's the beauty of it. Just the data seamlessly moves across the organization in an automated way without thought. So by the end of it, we had created a really powerful data platform where I can pull up a dashboard and instantly measure how I'm performing or how another department is performing, whatever whatever that might be, whether it be ticket sales, food and beverage sales, retail sales, et cetera, or fan satisfaction. And not only can we see past performance, but we can use it to predict our future. So we played enough games and have enough seasons worth of data to know that if we play the Boston Celtics on a Tuesday night at 7 p.m., roughly how many people are going to be in the building. And because we work off of per caps, we know roughly how much money each fan will spend on ticketing F&B and merch. So now in August, when the NBA schedule normally comes out, we're predicting attendance and revenue for a game in February. And right now, we only have a 3.5% margin of error doing that. So this was huge for our business. And it was actually so successful that the Heat created a brand new startup. We call it 601 Analytics after our arena's address. And we now are providing data services to other sports teams and ticketed venues. It's remarkable. And all of this is built on Microsoft Tech. It's fascinating how you can understand and anticipate customer preferences and behaviors through comprehensive data-driven audience insights. It's also critical to take these insights generated by analytics and translate them into concrete business decisions and actions to improve the overall digital engagement. Many companies get trapped into looking at CX metrics in isolation from operational and business metrics. How does the heat get a holistic view? Yeah, that's a really good point. So we're data and tech nerds and we get that. So we try really hard to recognize that bias and maintain balance. Uh, For me, our CMO helps me do that. He's a a brilliant guy and he's so good about making us remember that this is about the fan first. Like I said earlier, we believe that if we win and take care of the fan, then the business will follow. It's not just a theory. I'll give you a recent example. So last off season, I asked the organization for an upgrade to our food and beverage point of sale system. We had an an old school system and it, it was what it was. We couldn't extend the capabilities for things like mobile order ahead, kiosks, digital tipping, things that make the fan experience better. It didn't have APIs, that sort of thing. So we went to RFP and we found a system that we really liked. So I, I pitched it to the rest of the executive team. And it's, it's interesting because we're a, a lot like other businesses. We're a retailer, we're a restaurateur, we're a concessionaire. But the difference is we have a really limited amount of time with which we can transact. Uh, So if we upgrade our POS, we'll have fans spend less time waiting in line, we'll have less attrition, both things that improve the fan experience, and we'll have more transactions. Ultimately, that means a happier fan and hopefully more money. The organization said yes, and now we had to deliver. So in tandem with installing the new point of sale system, we built out a new Power BI dashboard to prove out this business case. Long story short, At the time of the NBA hiatus a few months ago, with no other variable in play, same pricing, same concession stands, we had sold over $1 million more in the same period of time year over year. We improved the fan experience, which drove up revenues, and we were able to prove it all with the data in Power BI. Wow, that's an excellent point. No single metric is going to give you a complete uh, picture, but rather it's a cumulative view um, that you're able to bring together and see at every touch point throughout a customer journey. And the ability to link the operational metrics to the customer experience is really found is really amazing. So effective operations sounds like it's the key to superior fan engagement in your side of the business. Um, And it's important to also understand the right operational metrics to help your team to know what levers you can pull throughout those areas to improve the collective customer experience. Ultimately, it's about fostering data-driven culture across an organization to provide that single source of truth. And it sounds like your leadership team is all bought into that across every line of business, um, from the business offices to the arena floor. And that's what's keeping everyone on the same page. So that's all the time that we have for today. But Matthew, do you have any final closing thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think it's important to note that this is not just about technology. You've got to get your folks bought in to this new way of doing things. And part of that includes data literacy. It's not enough to just put a ton of data in front of your people. You have to make it relevant to them, simple to understand, and make them keep coming back so that they get out of their spreadsheets and into things like Power BI and Dynamics. So that's a really important important part of digital transformation. 
Thank you so much for taking the time to share your story, the journey that you've been on, your organization has been on, and it's always great chatting with you. You too. Thanks for having me. Thank you.